Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we are taking a look at Atlantean Mermail, or what I like to call it, high-quality H2O, the deck. Um, I think this over the years, it's gone from a more pure variant of, like, Atlantean Mermail and evolved into, um, like, just like a water combination deck. You just combine all the best water engines in the game, which do include Atlantean and Mermail, but there's just so many other engines you're including as well that, like, I think you just have to sit back and say, this isn't Atlantean Mermail anymore. This is just water good stuff. It's kind of like the Dragon Link of decks, but for water. You just play the best of your, like, category of cards and, and go at it, so... Pretty cool deck. It's known for being a very, very scary deck going first uh, and then has trouble going second. I think that's still probably pretty true, but um, I think this deck is legit. I do think this is like a legit rogue deck. It just doesn't see enough play. I do. I just think the power is there, just not enough people are playing it to really um, get a ton of results and kind of pop off as like, you know, showing people what, what it's got. But uh, one other thing to keep in mind is that like, I do expect, based on the um, order of structure decks they're doing in the OCG for the structure deck R series, that we they will probably get a structure deck R in the OCG in probably the next year to year and a half, I would guess. And uh, that, um, that'll obviously could be like eight new Atlantean cards and just make the deck pop off even harder. So really cool deck. I have this is my spin on it here. You guys know I'm not a huge combo player, but... Uh, uh, I do like messing around with theory at from time to time on this stuff. So let's just jump into this thing and I'll show you what I'm working with. Starting off here for our first package, uh, Atlanteans. We have the Triple Prince, Triple Dragoon, one Heavy Infantry, and one Marksman. This is pretty standard, I think, all things considered. Uh, Neptibus is by far the most important card in the entire deck that you ever want to see. You have multiple cards in the deck that are built around, designed to either get to him or just be him. And, um, yeah, that's really important. This card is insane. The fact that it sends for cost and then the send for cost will get you a search anyway. So negating him is like bad for your opponent. So yeah, Neptibus is insane. Then you have Triple Dragoon. Uh, when it's sent to activate a water monster's effect that searches any sea serpent in the entire game, that is absolutely insane. Stuff like Moulin Glacier that you can get access to, absolutely broken. Uh, and the fact that he's not once per turn either. There are literally combos where you send all three in the same turn and add three times. It's crazy. And then these two, these are just utility for the most part. Uh, when they're sent to use a water monster's effect from your hand, uh, they uh, will target a face down and face up card on the field and destroy them. Uh, just good utility, you know, and they're sea serpents, so they're pretty easily searchable, and they're good. I mean, there's not much else to say about that. Uh, just really good utility removal that the, the deck kind of needs access to at times. Moving on from there, we move to our Mermail package. Triple copies of Abyss Teus, one copy of Abyss Megalo, one copy of Abyss Pike, and one copy of Abyss Gund. Uh, Abyss Teus being, again, one of our better starters in the deck, it pitches a water monster to summon itself, and then it searches a little four lower, uh, mermail monster that's usually going to be Pike, but I guess in certain situations it could be Gunned as well. Uh, Megalo, sending two monsters from your hand to the graveyard to get him, but then he searches a, an Abyss spell or trap. I think this card's fine, I just think, um... The fact that he sends two is, is why I run him at one. I don't really want to see him the hard way in my hand. I'd rather be searching him out when I'm good and ready to go for a play, including him. Uh, and that's why I just play him at one. It's just not a card I always want to see in my hand. Uh, and then Pike and, and Gun, they're usually just part of combos. Um, but they're good. They're good nonetheless. Pike can trigger multiple water effects and then Gun. Kind of a brick, but like any, as long as it's opened with something, like it should be fine. Uh, something that gives you a discard. Moving into our next engine, we move to Deep Seas. This is Triple Diva and Triple Minstrel here. Um, Diva is awesome. She is essentially three more copies of your Neptibus. Um, really good normal summon. She's probably the overall most powerful normal summon in the deck. She's a little more susceptible to hand trap because if she gets stopped, you don't even get like the dump for cost off of Teus. That's why sometimes just opening Teus himself is better. Because even if my opponent has a hand trap, he still gets the dump. We're still getting value. We're still getting searches, and we're probably playing through. Whereas if you get stopped and your hand is poop aside from her, you probably just pass and lose the duel. So just be wary about that. But I do think her overall power means you probably got a player. And then we have Triple Minstrel. Um, really good card. This card is like a hand trap anti-measure. 
What he says is he can pitch himself plus another water monster from hand to look at your opponent's hand and banish one card from it until the end of the turn. They get the card back, so they technically don't lose anything. You got to go minus two, but it does hit a hand trap before you even give them a chance to use it. And it gives you complete hand and deck knowledge, most likely, over your opponent. And you'll know the matchup. You'll also know what the rest of their hand is to know if they have any other hand traps you need to worry about playing around. And that is just such a huge leg up that um, I think this card becomes mandatory because of that, because hand traps could usually, in the past, like, hugely derail this deck, and they're super, super played right now. A lot of decks are just playing, like, 10-plus hand traps right now, and uh, even going into splite format, splites will play 12-plus hand traps, so you got to be ready for that. Moving into our next uh, package here, Triple Swap Frog and the One Ronin. This is kind of just, again, another anti-hand trap uh, measure, but also just good extenders regardless uh swaps i mean swaps insane you know just helping us get to uh, uh totally awesome before we have to get to five summons absolutely crazy this is so good uh at just really really facilitating a, an anti nibiru line of play because that's really the biggest fear in the deck that's the number one hand trap versus this deck and i know nibiru is going to loot uh, see a lot less play going into the next format with splites being a thing but um still like people are going to side it for the matchups that aren't splite probably and um, you got to be ready for that stuff um, anyway. So uh, really, really good package. Helps you extend, makes your end board better, makes your end board safer. Uh, it's everything you want. Really, really good package. Uh, for another kind of similar package, it doesn't help you necessarily beat hand traps, but it does help you just extend through getting interrupted really nicely. And that's the shark package. This is like the one new, new thing to this deck that um, nobody would have been playing before because Abyss Shark didn't exist before. Uh, it's really cool. Um, so Abyss Shark, essentially, if you just have a water on field, is a one-card Stealth Kraken. That's why I really like him. He's also a level 5, which is a pretty good level, all things considered, just in general. Um, that way, uh, when it comes to, like, Lapis Dragon, we're able to get into a, a Synchro 10 pretty easily. Minstrel's a level 3, so we can get into our Dragite as well, like, off of Halky Fibrax. Like, you definitely, he definitely opens up some cool plays because his level is, is pretty specific, but... Uh, if you have control, if you control water, he summons himself and then searches a level three, four, or five fish, which is going to be your one angler. Or another little nifty search target is Abyss Pike. He's also a level four fish. Those are really the only two targets, but you don't have to search to resolve his effect. He can just summon himself as a level five anyway and still be a good extender. Also, as far as angler goes, be wary that uh, once you summon him, you cannot summon for the hand for the rest of the turn. So just know that once you fire that, um, you know, not not to not just don't lock yourself out of summoning certain things that you might have wanted to so just be mindful of that and then we move to our one of monsters that are you know cool but um you know just exactly one ofs we have one testudo and not uh, a rot newman one fishborg launcher one lapis dragon one mooling glacia and one gamma seal so most of these are like brick slash engine requirements but really interesting in their own right testudo a rot newman's uh my personal choice i've not seen him played in a lot of lists but i really really like him so one uh he's level one so one for one can turn him out but he's an insane floodgate he says neither player can special summon monsters with 1800 or more attack uh the idea though is if we're doing a combo this will be the last thing we summon which means we might have two monsters way bigger than 1800 and now our opponent can't summon anything that big to threaten our board Splites can still do a decent amount of stuff under this, so that's the one thing to keep in mind, but they can't summon Toad under this, uh, and they can't summon a lot of the Exedes that are, like, a little bit bigger under this anyway, so they, they probably still won't threaten you too much. This card's just insane. It's an absolutely nasty Floodgate, and if you're pairing it with multiple other interruptions, uh, especially Negates, um, it's going to be very hard to out this card. And so the idea is, even if you draw it, you just dump it off of uh any any of your water monsters that discard to do their thing and then you'll use uh coral and enemy uh the marine sets link to just revive this card in defense mode and uh you're you're up you're in you're in a good position next up uh fishburg launcher this is your halky fibrax target your main one at least uh he's really good he says if all monsters in your grave are water which in our main deck we only play water monsters uh, he can survive himself he's a very good he's just lone fire or not lone fire he's a glow up bulb but for waters Lapis Dragon. This is one of the bigger bricks in the deck. He's really bad to draw. These are, like, workable. But this one's just, like, pretty dang bad. Because uh, he, when he's added from deck to hand, he special summons himself. 
Um, and then if he's added from graveyard to hand, he special summons himself. So, uh, really good card. I mean, he's a level five tuner. He has a requirement for like certain combos. Like I said, he's a level five tuner plus the abyss dragon is like level 10, which is really good in terms of how their levels line up. But still, one of the worst bricks in the deck for sure. Then you have uh, Moulin Glacier. This card is insane. You're, it's a sea serpent, so it's searchable off Dragoons. They're, all your combos usually go through him, where he hand rips your opponent for two while also giving you a 2800 beat stick. Absolutely insane card. And then one Gamma Seal. Uh, this card is kind of just a cool, like, malleable kind of slot where it's a cool, like, going second card. It, you know, it helps us break through bo certain boards uh, at times. Also, he's a water, so he's just pitchable off of any of your monsters that need to pitch a water anyway to do what they do. So he's, like, not entirely dead going for it. That's why even Lapis Dragon isn't that bad of a brick, right? Um, and, yeah, so, like, he just, like, either way, he's, like, he's going to be made use of. And I also love the idea. I saw this video, and I mentioned this a couple times. Uh, the, the idea of, like, the law of playing multiple one-offs. Uh, just to make your deck more unpredictable, harder for your opponent to play around when you just have one-offs like this that can be so clutch in random situations, but because you only play one of it, your opponent's not playing around it, and uh, it's pretty cool. Into the spells, uh, a lot of one-offs here for the spells. Uh, one, Biscale Mizuchi. This card is quite good. Um, searchable off Abyss Megalo and uh, adds an extra spell negate to your board. Uh, additionally, it's important to keep in mind that while you have this up, if you negate something with like, let's say a Dragite, uh, you want to negate a different spell for Dragite, this card will still, uh, this card won't be fi uh, forced to fire once that card's negated. So you'll still have the spell negate for later, but it's really cool. It makes your deck not lose to like Dark Ruler no more or Droplets unless they want to, unless they send a spell. Um, or even if you do, you still have a spell negate. So if they need to resolve a spell after that, they, they still have to worry about that. So it's a cool card, adds, just makes your board a little bit stronger, which is cool. One for one, um, really cool card. This is either summoning uh, Neptibus out of the deck or your Testudo Orat Newman, usually. I mean, technically you could also summon Fishburg Launcher uh, if you wanna go into Halk line, but uh, sometimes if you don't even need the one for one until the end of the turn, the deck adds so much, you'll have like multiple cards in hand and you just add this to the end of your board. So not only do you have to worry about whatever else they had uh, too, but like now there's also like an insane floodgate on your board. Uh, Reborn, just an insane, you know, extender, helps you play through interruptions. Pot of Avarice, I've seen people play three Pot of Avarice and be really happy about it. I'm okay with just messing with the one right now. I'd be open to adding more, but um, it's a card that kind of like requires you to already be able to play, so that's like the one downside of it, but it is a card that definitely helps with one of the weaknesses of the deck, which is just once you already run through your combo, you go through a lot of cards in your deck, and so a lot of your stuff can just be turned off if your opponent is able to break through. And so being able to play this allows you to just reset a lot of stuff and make your uh, your long game much be much better. And then called. You got to play called. Like, we're weak to Ash. We're weak to most hand traps. So, like, you, you play it. And the last two cards in the main are Dark Ruler No More. These are just two more copies of Haymaker cards. Uh, yes, I could. you could try and play hand traps, but they conflict with, like, Fishborg Launcher if they're monsters. I'd rather play an, ex an extremely high ceiling card, which is just turn off an entire board and then be able to, like, go into your your plays and, like, hopefully remove their whole board and set up your own. That's what I'm going to focus on this. Um, and by playing two, you're not going to draw two, two of them too often. So I feel like this is fine. Um, I look at some other options as well, but, like, maybe some more flexible cards, like Forbidden Chalice. Uh, I don't love Droplet. This deck doesn't want to discard stuff unless it's by Water Monster usually. So I'd rather play a card like Chalice than Droplet in the deck, and maybe that's a little more flexible, but lower ceiling. I don't know. Something to look at. Uh, so that's it for the main. 40 cards in the main. Moving into the extra. We start with our links here. One, Halky Fibrax. Two copies of Coral and Enemy. One, Abyssalatia. And one copy of Miss Starboy. Um, nothing too crazy here, I would say, overall. Um, Halk, obviously part of your line is getting you Fishborg Launcher or potentially Minstrel. The Coral and Enemy, normally people play one of this. I'm only playing two because of the Testudo or Rot Newman. We're like in a simplified board state. Uh, it, it, once you've gotten Newman Engraved, which maybe you used one of these turn one, just being able to make one of these and just reborn Newman again can just win the duel. It can just ice the duel and your opponent say, oh yeah, I'm not adding that in a simplified board state. And you've got a 2000 beater already up. Uh, that could be too much. There, uh, one, uh, Abyssalatia. You have to play her. She's really, really nice. She comes up in very specific scenarios uh, and, and 
combo lines where you're able to like search either your infantry or your marksman and then she's going to be able to quick effect discard them she helps you grind she floats she's kind of annoying to deal with so i like her a lot and then the star boy he kind of helps you push for game in certain instances i like this card it's pretty cool and you can also make him under testudo or rot newman because he's 1400 but then he buffs all your stuff uh to be over 1800 so uh, and he floats, so big problem at times for your opponent. Exceeds one Bahamut, uh, double toad, one, oh, hold on, one stealth kraken, one dweller, and one abyss gyos covering all of our Exceed lineup. Uh, so there's 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 lines where you go into Bahamut. Uh, when you do, uh, you summon a toad, and you also have a second toad just in case you want to hard make it off the frog engine. Stealth Kragen is your, your best just number rank four to be able to make with the Abyss Shark play, which is really cool. It's a Floodgate. It is just a once per turn Dryden, non-targeting. I love it. Dweller, really good as well. Um, I'm, I would, I don't want to cut Dweller. I just think space is a little bit tight. Uh, the one card I'm not playing here is a card that I've seen come up in a couple people's lists, which is the Bujin Link 2, because it can reborn double... Um, Dragoon, or it can summon a Dragoon from hand, a Dragoon from grave, and then you overlay them for like a Bahamut. Bahamut detaches to summon a Toad, and then it triggers uh, one of the Dragoons again uh, for another search for like Moon and Glacia, uh, which is pretty powerful. Um, I just don't know exactly what I'd cut right now. Uh, like part of me wants to cut the Dweller. I don't really want to cut the, the Synchros. Maybe it could just be the Coral Anemone or the Mistar Boy. Like the extra Coral Anemone or the St Mistar Boy. Um, but I just want to make sh make note of that here. So yeah, Dweller's obviously insane once you know the matchup. Like tier elements, you just win the duel. Uh, I guess it does stop Ronin versus Splite as well. So that can be like decent. And then Abyss Gaios. Uh, this card's pretty awesome. It's a pretty powerful one-off interruption. But it takes two eights so it kinda, or two sevens. Which does kind of ask for a lot, but like if you have a Teus and you have a Megalo on field, that's pretty doable. So uh, you don't go into him all the time, but when he comes up, he, he's pretty powerful. So I like having him there. And then for the uh, the Synchros, uh, for the Waters, you have the one Dragite and the one Chengying. Uh, Dragite's awesome. This is like my favorite end board piece that I always end on because it's just, it's so good. And then Chengying, um, also good in his own right. Uh, he's just like a really annoying to deal with at times, especially if you can like make him and then do the Testudo or Rotten Newman play. They have to out Newman and then they have to worry about adding this guy, which is like really annoying for them. And then we finish with these two. So this is also part of the play. A lot of, you have a play where you like end on Halk with Dragite. So on the opponent's turn, you'll use Dragite to negate a spell or trap. Then you can use Halk to tag out into formula. Uh, and then formula draws you a card and then synchros with the um the dragite to make this guy to pop multiple cards i mean as far as tuners in your grave you'll probably have at least two if not more you could have minstrel you could have lapis you could have you probably want to fish because i think he banishes himself when he leaves the field but uh, you'll pop it usually at least two cards um oh number oh it's just synchro monsters in your graveyard so that'll be at least two at least two on that that route as well um, which is really cool. So just pop two after a, a pop two, a draw and a, a spell and trap negate after you've probably used Milling Glacier to rip your opponent for two. You're usually not losing if, uh, if that little play resolves. So like I said, I think Bu Bu the Bujin Link 2 is the only thing I would look at trying to find room for again. It could be the second Coral. It could be the Mastar Boy. Or I would say, I think the Gaius or the Dweller are also potentially cuttable. But I don't think anything else I'd really even look at cutting at this point in time. But yeah, just keep that uh, in your brains. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, big fan of the deck. Uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, as far as combo decks go, I just think it's really different. It's really interesting. Uh, it definitely has brick potential, but I also think it's like pretty consistent all the way just because you have a lot of these just different engines. Like even if your hand is like awkward, sometimes you're just like, uh, make a stealth kraken. Like I'll just make a stealth kraken because I saw the shark engine and I saw the frog engine. So I'll just end on like, a toad plus a stealth kraken and just call it a day for that turn and like you know like you can actually get places with that funny enough like it's pretty like that can get the job done so um i like the deck it's cool it's really interesting again keep an eye out for future support there's also the new fish archetype i didn't even mention that the new fish archetype that'll be revealed in like less than a month when power of the elements comes out 
so that's like three weeks away. So it'll be, that could potentially have some synergy here. We do synchro stuff in here and that seems to be a synchro deck. Definitely, definitely stay tuned. But uh, that's it for me here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me down the line. And let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on the build. I'm no like Atlantean Mermail aficionado, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts if you have any opinions on what you might uh, change about the build that I have here. But again, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.